Okay, now it's back again. Bruh. Someone told me I'm not the sharp sharpest tool in the shed. What does this mean? Uh huh. Hey, now you're a rock star. Yeah. What's the difference between a sock and a camera? One takes five toes while the other takes four toes. <laughs> Them dad jerks. Sure be a dad jerk. Oh, if you haven't found one, I have one. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. There's like an updated story to it as well. <clears throat> I'm only also for not wanting to hide that my mom's are gay to my girlfriend's parents. Wait, what was the title? Wait, hold on. Am I the also for not wanting to hide that my mom's are gay to my girlfriend's parents? Okay. Not wanting I'm to 17. hide. I'm 17 and started going out with my girlfriend seven months ago. We were already chatting before school went online. I asked her out after. So her parents want to meet mine when it's safe to do and have dinner at their house. I'm cool with that and my mom's are too. But my girlfriend told me that her parents don't know that I have two moms and she doesn't want them to because they're not raging homophobes, but they don't like that. Mm. Mm. So they're low key homophobes. But, yeah. but their kid's gay. Yeah. She just says it will make them feel weird and uncomfortable and ask if only one of my mums could go. What? I don't know. I just don't see why I gotta lie. If we stayed together, obviously they will find out. And also that would mean to ask my mums if one of them not go. I never, I've, I've never been embarrassed about it or weird. So I don't see why it even matters. My girlfriend has been pissed at me ever since. And she just tells me to do it so it's not uncomfortable for her parents. Even my friends, they're saying it's not a big deal and it's not like I'll get grounded for asking my moms to do this. I'm caught in the middle here because I don't want to lie, but my moms are excluded one, one of them. But everyone is acting like I'm being the ass for not doing this. I don't... What? No, that's not an asshole thing for... She should be like be able to be open like uh, eventually they're gonna find out yeah i don't understand what's the difference between not wanting to like know your girlfriend has gay parents but like you have you you are gay yeah the difference what what is this internalized homophobia what I genuinely don't understand that one. Wait, you said there was an update on this one? So, yeah, 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 there's an update. <clears throat> uh, so we broke up <laughs> yesterday since nice. it had already been days of us not talking. I listened to your comments and decided to ask how would she feel if I told her only one of her parents could go because my mums are uncomfortable around heterosexual couples. She basically laughed and said it's not the same thing because it, that's a normal couple. Oh. There's a little bit of internalized yeah, wait, wait. Is going on here with this girlfriend. This is a little bit of you need to sort some shit out. <laughs> yeah, wait, is there if you're male or considering female? a heterosexual couple, a normal couple, and you yourself are gay, that is a little bit, a little bit, maybe a lot of bit, of internalized homophobia yeah. <laughs> that you gotta you gotta work through a little bit there. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. But, but is the OP male and or is it no? They're OP... girlfriends. They're girlfriends. two girlfriends. Okay, then what the? F what is At least. 
That's what it looks like. Oh, it might not be. That's what it looked like it was saying in the beginning. He, they never specified. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe... Could be by. They. Could be, yeah. Uh... The chances of them being gay is 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> it's 50-50. Interesting. Man, I don't know. Like, that's... Homo couple. Never mind. This whole family is just homophobic. <laughs> yeah. That kind of got me, and I asked what's not normal about my mom's. Yeah. I think that's when she saw she fucked up with what she said. She said she didn't mean it like that and just knows it would be awkward and weird because her parents don't like that. Which means they're homophobic. I don't know who needs to tell this girl her parents are homophobic, but... <laughs> they're homophobic. The signs are there. It's literally the definition you are not of homophobia. Them. Yeah. What even? Uh, I asked her if she would feel like that too, and she didn't say anything. We talked for a while, and she still wasn't getting how this would hurt my mom's asking them to hide who they are. Then it got to where she admitted it would be embarrassing for her parents. For her parents would know I have two moms. For her, for her, if her parents, I'm guessing. And yeah, I wasn't gonna take that and told her we're done. Not gonna be with someone who's embarrassed about my mom's or doesn't want others to know. If that was it. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you, OP. My friends haven't said anything to me yet, but think I'm just gonna block them out because I don't want to deal with their <laughs> shit right now. I know I said it in my comments. I was thinking about asking my moms for advice, but since we broke up, I'm not gonna tell them why. I only told my moms it wasn't working out so with her, so we're done. They don't need to. They don't need to know why, because I don't want them to feel it's their fault, and they really like my girlfriend. This was. Oh. This would hurt their feelings knowing she was feeling that way. It's not my first breakup, but it still really sucks, and I'm feeling sad. It is what it is, though. Thanks for everyone's help. Blah, 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 blah. Bruh. And everybody clap. Yeah, that was just the... The parents are just dicks. The, yeah, that the girlfriend was dick. no better. Yeah. Literal dick. It's, it's like one of those things like, I can stand next to a lesbian couple, <laughs> but if they kiss next to me, disgusting. Get out of me. <laughs> literally, literally. Um... Wait, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> am, am I the asshole for refusing to pay for my sister's meal after farting on her meal by accident? Please don't take this as a How joke. You accidentally fought on a meal. Yeah, this is 100% real. I'm 16 female, and lately I've been really gassy. And I've tried taking medication for it, but I still can't stop farting as much as I do now. I just fart three times a day, but when I say it stinks so bad, it really does. Recently, my sister decided to invite me for dinner because it was my birthday recently. While I've been getting dressed, I completely forgot to take my medicine, so in case I fart, it doesn't stink so bad. When my aunt was driving me to the restaurant, my aunt asked if I took the medicine and told her I completely forgot. She said it's okay because missing one pill wouldn't would still function as it does regularly. I completely agreed. While in dinner, my stomach started growling badly. I kept having to use the restroom, but I knew it was just because my stomach had gas. Well, 20 minutes in, I needed to use the restroom again, but there was literally someone using the restroom as well. I was completely desperate and kept knocking until no one answered. I'm thinking that it may have just... Maybe if I just hold it hold maybe if i just hold the then it what the fuck can i read i'm thinking that in. maybe if i just hold yeah it in nothing will happen and my stomach will just ignore the pain i came back to sit down and my sister jokingly said maybe you can use the restroom in the bushes so it's not as bad as bad for a stray animal like you i was so furious and i stood up and stood near her and took the biggest fight and worst of all, it was so bad that everyone kept coughing and crying because of the bad smell. We were oh my God. kicked out after paying. My sister called me saying that she was the one to pay her back after what happened. I was completely shocked and said, no, you called me a wild animal and called me basically a homeless animal. And that's why I farted and I hung up. Now I'm being called the asshole, um, a whole word because I took the joke way too far. Context, whoever was at Olive Gardens. I'm so sorry. I was just angry at my sister. I didn't mean to ruin your dinner, but have a great life. So the sister jokingly said, maybe you can use the restroom in the bushes. It's not so bad for a stray animal like you. 
That's a bit of a shitty comment, but at the same time, I don't think you should necessarily fuck. I don't, I don't think it justifies you shotting on their fucking meal. Especially when you know it's bad. Like, why would you... Why would you fart on somebody else's food? Like, and, and like, purposely do that. In front of everyone else. Like, what? I'd be so embarrassed. Jeffrey the a-hole. Malice meal ruining. Yeah, I don't think the sister meant, like... Yeah, it's like their brother-sister banter. I don't think they meant... She actually meant it that way. She needs to see a doctor for sure. Like, gas is beyond normal. Literally. Literally, bruv. I... Yeah, I definitely think that... Yeah, she is the asshole. You ruined dinner, man. Ruin her diet. And you knew. Too much protein. Yeah. Bruh, ew. Why you do that? Why do you do that? Why you gotta do that? Like, she literally made their food inedible. <laughs> I think that she, yeah, she should pay. Sister, her, and her brown eyes. <laughs> Ew. Oh. I don't know what else to draw. <laughs> It's because I'm not used to cell shading, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> Maybe because I'm a guy. I also don't know what I'm doing. Nah. Funny as hell. <laughs> I think definitely need to see a doctor. Like, what causes you to? That is. That is unnatural. Yeah, what causes you to have gas that bad? Like that's. That's bad, bro. I feel like I need a fart on one of my friends' food. <laughs> Ew. Disgusting. Giving him pink mouth. Bruh. Oh, yuck. Why would you do that? Literally, why? Also, I feel like. I don't know, maybe she's not so ashamed of her farts, but like, I'd be embarrassed as fuck to do that. No matter how angry I was. Like, the fact that people were coughing. Girl, there's For something real. wrong. Like, you just set a gas attack on that Olive Garden, bro. <laughs> Literally disgusting. Probably an issue with her lower intestine, something isn't breaking down, right stuff, or she has a bad allergy. Maybe. I'm so nervous. Seeing someone cop over a fart. That's next level gas. Yeah, that is literally that is next level. That is next fucking level. Biological warfare is against the Geneva Convention girl. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Bruh, that's disgusting. But like also, okay, um, I would have been so pissed off because I love food. Uh, ben knows very well if I'm enjoying food not to like pinch, like take some because I will literally like fight for the death for like food. If, if someone farted on my food and I couldn't eat it, I would be so pissed off. I'd be, I'd be beyond pissed. Cause food is food, man. You're wasting it. Am I the asshole for purposely 
stopping my classmate winning an award and subsequently making her cry. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Alright. This is tagged not the asshole, so... We'll see. Okay. This issue was honestly making me frustrated. Almost everyone is saying I am in the wrong. People are talking behind my back. I genuinely don't know if what I did was correct or not. I just feel so lost. Please, please do help. I am 17, suffered a major accident while cycling when I was 13. I have two really deep, long facial scars. I've been bullied really bad because of it. I'm tall, ugly, and intimidating as per most girls. People make fun of other people by saying things like, why don't you just hook up with the OP's uh, user? I'm honestly used to it. Those people didn't matter to me anyway. But there is this girl I had known since middle school. Let's call her back, I guess. All right. Sorry, I honestly don't know how this works. I had a really, really big crush on her till a few days ago. I thought she was genuinely sweet and amazing. My family is incredibly supportive, so they urged me to ask her out. I can play a guitar, so I made this whole song for her. No, I went not to the song. city to get her favorite chocolate and stuff like that. Ooh, you trying really hard, my boy. Ooh. Okay, if it, this no, was the first the time I felt like really going and asking someone out in my life. And I felt that regardless of what I do, she shall see me for who I am and at least accept me as a friend. I was over the moon when she ended up accepting. We went to a fancy restaurant, had a fun time together and walked for 30 minutes. She was really sweet to me. The next week or so was honestly heaven. People started noticing me, even her friends seemed friendly to me. I honestly cried every day because I felt so fortunate to get so much love. It all broke down when a friend of hers who was on Instagram and followed back sent screenshots to me. I honestly felt betrayed and disgusted. She had posted th she had posts saying fulfilled his lifelong wish by being his valentine, making his day by finally helping him interact with my friends. He is ugly, but beautiful people accept ugly people. What? A hashtag ugly people matter, etc. Beck's friend then explained to me that she apparently wanted a good social media image and had thus asked all her friends to be kind to me and tolerate me to the first week of March no. and then distanced themselves from me. She apparently wanted to win some stupid positive role model award for her college application because she was lagging behind in community service and thought playing with my feelings for a few days wouldn't hurt and apparently since I was ugly, she was the kind one to give me attention anyway. I was in tears and honestly felt disgusted. My blood was boiling. I researched about this award, found a Facebook page about it online. I went to the authorities to confirm, it, <laughs> could confirm if her name was on the nominations list and then had my friends at work and family as alibi. She's apparently crying a lot because she received a message from the committee saying her nomination was withdrawn. I am now even more ostracized in school. But honestly, I have no remorse whatsoever and feel far from satisfied. Uh, edit. Uh, edit one. I'm honestly really grateful for not only judging me, not in that way, but also giving me love and support. Each comment means the world to me. I'm honestly crying reading some of the encouragement. No one besides my family has said these things to me. I know it might seem silly, but it genuinely means the world to me, guys. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Edit two. Honestly, the support is genuine. Oh, it's, he's just talking about how happy he is about everything. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, like, he's definitely not the asshole. Like, he did the right thing. Like, that's such a shitty thing to do, to play with someone's feelings like that. And then, like, by, like be talking behind their back saying, yeah, it's ugly. Like, who does that? And why would you think that makes you a good person? It, what the f- he, She literally just, like, played with him to get somewhere. Like, she used him, basically. To try to get into college. Yeah. What a nasty bitch, bro. Literally. And then, like, literally had proof saying that, like, oh, he's ugly and that, like, ugly people deserve attention. To what the fuck? He deserves so much better. He deserves so much better. Man. people need loving too myself for example all cast yeah like yeah she's seriously just a nasty piece of work like okay what what would why would you like she had to sit down and think about this plan and then think to herself like yes this is fine like this is a good thing to do yep what in the psycho bitch like Honestly. What? 
Seriously? What a nasty person. And her friends as well for like not finding any issue with that. Oh, only one of them. Yeah, yeah. Also, how well does she think that submission would go over? Do you does she really think that a college would see because ugly people are people too, ugly people matter. They'd see that and be like, damn, she's a she's a great person. Look at her giving all her time to ugly people. First off, why is she calling all these people ugly? Yeah. Why is she acting like being nice to an ugly person is charity? <laughs> If I were if I were anyone on that committee, I would be like, "What the fuck I'd be is like, this?" Was the biggest asshole like I have ever seen. Like I'd be like, "Ha, this is gonna be some like joke, right? Like this is gonna be some troll, yeah." This is gonna be something satirical, right? This yeah, is right. Is someone poking fun at people who would actually think stuff like this, right? This right? isn't this isn't the submission, right? This is just to like catch us off guard, right? Like it's funny, like ha, huh? like. I don't know why that would be funny. funny huh? yeah, like, no, what? Seriously? Welcome to Gale. <laughs> it's not his fault. Here's bad facial features. Uh, facial bad facial scars. If she had an accent and got scars, sh uh, she'd expect people to treat her the same way. Yeah, like. That's what he should have done. Should have scarred her in his on her face. Oh well, yeah. Thrown like hot oil or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't Bath do that. And attack. <laughs> yeah. And be like, I will teach you a lesson now. <laughs> and then submit that as his college thing, being like, I am teaching people. I lesson. saved the world from another pretty asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, Yidi. Wow, what an asshole, absolute piece of shit, piece of shit. Okay, what weird thing can I find now? What the fuck? What, okay, what is this? Am I the asshole for laughing at my best friend's dead dog? Um, oh. do you even need to write the rest of this? Am I the asshole <laughs> for laughing at my friend's for, uh, tissues? Female, 15, dead dog. Uh, a week ago, my best friend's dog ran away and got run over. Oh my god, the poor thing. Her family went looking for it. It was squished on the side of the road. You could see its guts, um, well that's detailed, and was extremely flat. My best friend invited me over to bury the dog because I was very close with her and her family. I was helping to lift the dog into the grave when I looked at the dog's face and started laughing hysterically. The face was all squished and looked really weird and I couldn't help it but laugh. After the incident my best friend yelled at me and hasn't talked to me since. Am I the arsehole? Was she overreacting? Um, I think you're the arsehole and I think you may also have some sort of narcissistic personality disorder. Potentially psychopathic. Like, who could look at that and laugh? I feel like that would be traumatic, if anything. Hopefully you're a psychopathic liar rather than the winner of the worst person ever, if it's true. Obviously, you're the arsehole. What is wrong with you? That you would laugh hysterically at any dead animal, but especially your friend's dog. I'd never speak to you again. Your friend will never get over the heartless laughter from you. This is not normal. No recognition for how awful you were. No empathy. You need to be seen by a professional. Seriously messed up. Agreed. Oh my god, literally, you're the asshole. Come on, random stranger. Not cool. It's not that bad. It's not like I ran over that stupid dog anyways. She was overreacting. <laughs> you don't openly laugh at other people's misfortune and grief, especially right in front of them. Flip the situation around. Would you like to have other people laugh at uh, pain when you were experiencing at some point in your life? Who cares? Just forgive and forgive, forget and move on. If you can't do that, then don't be friends with me. Gladly. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? I 
can't speak too much. I don't think I would laugh at, a, like, in this situation where a friend is grieving over their mangled dead pet. Yeah, like... But I also feel like there is a fucked up portion of me where if I were to see some, some mangled animal, it, it would go one of two ways. I would either feel sick to my stomach or I would really have to hold in, like, not laughing because I would be so nervous looking at it. So I would just have to hold yeah. it in and look away. Like, I think this guy is just an asshole. I would an not... Dick from, like, absolutely not like... You should absolutely have not let yourself laugh hysterically in that moment. That is, that's an absolutely like a terrible thing to do. Yeah. What the fuck? Like, I feel like maybe you could get away with like, oh, like, oh, like, be like, if you, okay, if you laughed like just out loud, like just by accident, and you were just like, oh my god, like I'm so sorry, like the face is just kind of funny, like it, who laughed that? It caught anywhere? me off guard. Yeah, I'm yeah. so sorry. I did yeah. not mean to. Yeah. Do that. But. Laughing hysterically and then being like, "Oh, it was funny." This dog, it, like, that's their friend, they're, they're, like their pal, their companion, and it's just been smushed all over the road, bruv. Like, what the fuck? This poor dog. And, like the way he just described it, I knew it was gonna be like off because he like went into detail about being like smushed all over the road. Like he could have just said like the dog was hit. You didn't have to say it was flat and all that shit, like. Oh my god. It's one thing to get caught in a giggle loop, another to laugh hysterically. Yeah, that's like yeah. laughing like manically, like hysterically. What? Yeah, bad vibes. Dad, bad, bad. He's it's definitely gonna grow up to be some kind of psychopath. 100%. How could he not? Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna go take my retainer out. <laughs> I'll be back. Actually, I'll run an ad and group here. Soup entertain. Uh, uh, uh. How's it? How's everyone's life? Where are you currently in your personal journey of fulfillment? My day has not been that long. I think I've been awake for like three hours. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Took my retainer out. Now I can eat chip. Eat chip. Eat hot chip. Oh. I feel like next week we should go through um, our slash nice guys. Yeah. That'll be terrifying. I was watching the baby and got thrown up on twice. Okay. Um, oh my closet. Wait, what the heck? Oh boy.
Wait, what the fuck? What? Am I the asshole for telling my sister that she doesn't deserve to call me her little brother because I tower over her? So I'm 17 and I'm 6'2". My sister is 19 female and 5'3". Despite this, she still calls me her little brother. I feel so belittled when she says this. Even when I tell her to stop, she keeps saying it. Yesterday, my sister was talking on the phone with someone referred to me as a little brother. She got off the phone a little later and I chimed in and said I was really sick of her calling me her little brother. She just smiled at me and in front of my eyes changed my um, contact from my full name to a little baby brother plus a blue heart emoji. I got really upset and told her that I knew she did it to get under my skin and that I wouldn't give her what she wanted. But she said I bought it all on myself. Am I the asshole? Wait, what the f <laughs> okay, in no, the comments, but like no one's an asshole here. <laughs> in the comments, you're the asshole. Uh, they quote, I'm 17, you're 17. My sister's 19, your sister's 19. She is your big sister and you're her little brother. You know the expression has dick all to do with height, so drop the dis disingenuous act. <laughs> like, it, yeah, it's based on age, not height. What the fuck? Does this guy have like something about height? Mm. It's an age thing. My, my little brother will always be my little brother because he's not my big brother. Like, I'm a big sister to my little brother. Yeah, everyone's like, it has nothing to do with height. What the fuck? Dude, you're not an asshole, just a victim of your own ego. I have the same yeah. thing with my cousin. I'm 6'5 and she's about 5'3. She's older than me. And I call her big cuz because she's older than I am. Uh, in turn, she calls me her little cuz. This works out in your favor in about 20 years. Just remember her that, yeah, she is your big sister because she is older. <laughs> when introducing her, introduce her as a big sister. That way it it jacks with you by being her little brother because you're the younger. It will jack with her because she's older. Yeah keep tongue in cheek yeah am i the also for pointing out my friends are not famous what wait what, what? <laughs> my friends are dating they're also actors who have had small roles in a few tv shows i'm talking two lines or less i say this not to be a hater i truly am rooting for them but to give you a scope of their reach, neither of them have a following in real life or on social media. They've got under 1,500 followers combined. Anyway, last week I posted a group picture on Instagram of people celebrating a friend's birthday. Everyone in the photo has got their arms around each, other, each other's shoulders. Very platonic. Anyway, yesterday in a group chat between the three of us, they asked me to take the photo down because they don't want the public to know they are dating. I would consider it if they looked bad, too sloppy, drunk, etc. But they don't. Also, everyone has their arms around each other, not just them. Anyway, I asked them what they meant, and they said they didn't want to end up in gossip rights. What the fuck? I pointed out that they are not famous and that they don't even have fucking IMDB pages. They were livid and called me a bunch of names. I think they're delusional, but they've been texting me demanding it and even sent me screenshots of them reporting it. Nothing has happened. At this point, I don't even want to be their friend. However, and probably because I am an asshole, I don't want to delete it based solely on principle. <laughs> Edit. Okay, so many of y'all are right. I suppose I should separate how I feel about their ridiculous, delusional, stupid reasoning with the fact that no one should have an image of themselves online that they don't want made public. I'll take it down. I don't... I don't think he's necessarily an asshole. It's, it's like everyone sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, because of the reason why he kept it up. Yeah. Like, yeah, because the reason he kept it up, like, yeah, they're not, I mean, yeah. Obviously, maybe they don't want to, you know, have that photo up because they're uncomfortable with it. Yeah, sure, take it down, whatever. It doesn't hurt you to take it down. But, like, it's kind of right. Like, they're not famous and going to end up on, like, some... TMZ thingy, paparazzi, like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no assholes here, but everyone still kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, I 
guess you could say the same thing with like VTubers, like probably no one's gonna care. Like, you know, like for me, no one probably cares about who I am, but I still wanna, you know, keep some things private. <laughs> I'm not famous or anything, but I still want to keep some things private, so... I, I get what, you know... I don't necessarily right. want to... But they kind of put it in the perspective as if, like, we're famous, everyone's going to care about us, kind of. But probably not. Yeah, it's not problematic to want to keep stuff private. Yeah. Yeah, work stuff separate. Mm. They're just... They're weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird fucking dudes. Mm. Everyone's a bit strange. And that one. Oh, okay, this one. Am I the asshole? Wedding dress shopping for my daughter. Uh, my 28 year old daughter is getting married next year. She wants to invite his mother, his mother wedding dress shopping. Oh, she wants to invite, wait, hold on. My 28 year old daughter is getting married next year. She wants to invite his mother wedding dress shopping. We've been together for five years. I've never met his family. I know my daughter is just trying to be nice, but she also has a daughter. I feel kind, I feel some kind of way about this. I just let my daughter know that, no, and now she's upset and stressed out. I feel bad. It's just the way I feel. I can't really explain why. I'm willing to meet her, but the whole situation just makes me feel some kind of way. I can't really pinpoint my exact feelings. Am I the asshole? Huh? What's the situation? What's this? Uh, hold on. Let me read this again. So my 28 year old daughter is getting married next year. She wants to invite his mother wedding dress shopping. So I'm assuming she wants to invite the mother-in-law wedding dress shopping. They've been together for five years. I've never met the family. I know my daughter is just trying to be nice, but she's also but she also has a daughter. What? The mother-in-law has a daughter? I think so. You, you're the asshole. You've absolutely no reason to not want her there. Even you don't know and you're adding more stress to your daughter during the stressful time for no reason. It's common enough to invite the mother-in-law to dress shopping. If you have a good relationship with them, I invited my mother-in-law dress shopping with me and my mom. Just act like an adult. Yeah. She's working to join the families together and you feel some kind of way about it. Like, I guess it would be different if she just invited the mother-in-law and then not the mother. Yeah. But then that's probably a reason why she didn't invite the mother, you know? Hmm. Probably. OP is an asshole. Never met the family of the kids. Long term squeeze. Yeah, for five years. And they're getting married. Like. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. It's just some weird people out there. And find a find a one. Am I the asshole for leaving a significant facial scarring uncovered on a plane and being confrontational when a father asked me to cover it because it was scaring his son? What? 
You know the sun can just look away, right? <laughs> yeah. Close your eyes. <laughs> I sustained very bad injuries to my face this month. I'm in the stage of healing where the scar tissue has formed, but it's still very tender, new skin. I'm going to have very obvious facial scarring for the rest of my life. The injury starts about an inch above my hairline, goes down over my brow on that... So... Wait. Goes down over my brow so that on part hair will not grow back. Oh, so on that part here will not grow back. It continues down on my cheek where it is deepest. I'll always probably have an indentation in the fullest part of my cheek. Then it continues to my jawline. Shit, dude. That's, That's intense. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. intense. In some ways, it's okay. I'm happy it's just cosmetic damage. My friends are super reassuring, telling me how badass and sick it's gonna look. Also oh, true. True. They yeah. say I'm still as hot as ever, now a little more sexy and mysterious, lol. But in some ways, it really sucks. I know that I'm always going to be seen first as the girl with the scar, and it feels especially bad when people look at me differently. This week, I had to fly home for a family thing. It was a plan I'd made long before my injury. I wasn't really looking forward to the pity or people making a big deal of it. I'd rather it not be acknowledged. I'd also met with my dermatologist who said that I was at the stage of scar tissue formation that I no longer would be dressing the wounds. The skin was healing and instead I needed to, I needed to be applying topical cream and Vaseline to keep the site clean and moist. It also looks a bit ugly. The building scar tissue is very red and tender and with the Vaseline over it, it looks slick and shiny. So I get on this flight, I have the window seat, and I put my headphones and drift off to sleep when the plane is still boarding. I wake up to this kid, maybe 4 years old, sat next to me throwing a tantrum. I didn't catch the first part of it and honestly couldn't understand what he was yelling about. His father said to me, can you cover that injury? I said that my dermatologist re recommends I don't, so no, I don't think I will. He started snapping at me saying, there is no need to be so rude, that injury is graphic and it's scaring my little one. I said, this is my face, the only damn face I've got. It sucks being told I'm so ugly, I can't show my goddamn face in public. He started to backtrack saying, just until it's healed, and and I said, it'll always be with me. Maybe teach some fucking compassion and respect instead of telling a girl half your damn age what you think about her face, that's rude. He actually got up after that and I think went to the stewardess about a seat change because a young couple came to sit next to me on a few, min uh, uh, a few minutes instead. I've got to admit, I felt so low that I put on my sunglasses and had a quiet cry for my for a few minutes. Am I the asshole for not covering my healing scar and for not confront and for being confrontational about it? No. no. <laughs> the dad came to you and was like, "Uh, can you can you not look like that?" Yeah. Like, bro, a medical professional tell told her that she mm. should not cover, cover the it, scars. Yeah. So, you're gonna listen to the dog. Yeah, and like, you need to teach your child that sometimes some bad things happen to people um, and sometimes it's people tough. look different than other people and that doesn't matter. It still means they're, a, a, you know, a kind person. Just because they might look a little bit scary and a bit different to you doesn't mean they're going to hurt you. <laughs> like, like, Because yeah. that kid's just going to be like afraid. And then if she had to cover it up, like, would give it a give them the impression that someone different so, someone who looks different is not like should not be treated with uh, respect yeah that father's a fucking asshole a fucking asshole get your shit together dude yeah Come on. teach your kid about good life skills and uh, not life skills what am I looking for uh, teach your kid about the world and empathy and all that kind of stuff. Don't be a dick. Like, how would you feel if you were, like, scarred? And, like, yeah. If, yeah, imagine if you, like, were in a work accident or something. I don't know. And then your kid is like, eh, scary. <laughs> Cover up. Yeah, your own kid. Yeah. Is like, eh, eh. And you'd be like, no, it's just me, dad. And the kid's like, no, you're a monster now. Because you didn't teach them. You didn't teach them. You didn't sit them down and be like, just because people look different 
doesn't mean this like you need to be scary of them you know i've had something like this happen before shit man it sucks especially when it comes to like an injury or something like when someone's been injured first they've probably been through something traumatic to get that injury now they're going to be scarred for like the rest of their life why would you want to make them feel bad like, why would you want to make them feel extra bad? Like, you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If some kid was crying because of how my face looked, I would go all in and make that kid shit their pants. <laughs> of course you would, cast. Of course you would. Am I the asshole for going to Six Flags with my ex? My 40 year old female ex um, and their 41 male were technically together for six years but haven't really been a couple for a long time. Abuse on his part. Oh no, hold on, hold on. Okay, they're female, they're their 40 year old female and their ex is 41 male. Okay, there was abuse on his part. We officially broke up in April. We're still roommates and get along better this way. I started seeing someone new a few months ago right now we only write and talk on the phone until he can move out here you know the situation i'm in i've never hid this other than my ex i don't know anyone else where i live my ex and i decided we we're going to drive to the six flags for a day trip i don't like to drive so this is either on me and he likes he likes that i get free parking i told my new boyfriend this and he is now saying that he doesn't know if know what he wants anymore He's always been aware of this situation. I've never lied to him. I think he's overreacting, but parts of me wonder if I'm being an asshole. Okay, first red flag. Being an asshole, hmm? being an asshole for living with her abusive ex. Yeah, I, well, I was yeah, I was just about to say like uh. Yeah, but like first red flag, like he was abusive on his part, so I'd be kind of like scared to like live in the same place. Um, new bo new boyfriend is insecure. You can have amicable breakups. Yeah. It's weird what he's worried about. That mm. doesn't seem he's he's calling her an asshole, which means he's not worried about the guy still continuing to yeah, be abusive. abusive that's i was literally about to say like wouldn't you be like scared that um he's possibly potentially gonna like be more abusive to her if they're like still living together in that situation yeah like yeah like i think you'd be more worried about them living together than going to six flags like they yeah. live together in the same place. More information is needed, I think. Yeah. Um, most people are saying that uh, that she is the asshole. Or what? I don't know. I feel like if you're in this situation, you have to put yourself in your boyfriend's shoes. If he was hanging out with the abusive ex, how would it make you feel? You probably didn't want to do this malicious intent, but it's not exactly motivating to be in a relationship where someone still has a toxic ex in their life. I personally would not want to move if this was the case. I would also question the relationship at least. I had to say it. Um, maybe talk to your boyfriend, set some clear boundaries and expectations on both ends. I just don't under understand why he's being like iffy about Six Flags when they live together. I don't know like I think yeah like I said like red flag like he's abusive like and you're still living together hmm Maybe everyone sucks. Maybe that's like an everyone sucks.
Okay. It sounds like this one. Am I the asshole for selling shoes from my business to my mum instead of my best friend? I have a small boutique business. I post about some shoes I had on my website that sold fast and I only had size 6 to 10 left. Apparently my friend had comment on, commented under the post on my Facebook saying she wanted the 10s. However, I never saw the comment until later. My mum had texted saying she wants a size 9 when I originally put the shoes on the website but I told her... But I sold out size 9 that day. I told her the 10 could possibly fit but as a backup. I started searching through Facebook groups with other boutique owners for a week to try to find my mum's size 9 but no luck. I was texting my friend a couple days after she commented on Facebook and she told me again that she wanted the 10s. Now at this point I'm thinking just go on the website and place an order but she didn't say anything about going to order so I asked if she would like me to invoice her instead and she said yes I sent then and there my mum lives two hours away and she came to town to see me so i figured that would be the perfect time for her to try on the shoes at this point my friend still hasn't paid her invoice my mum of course falls in love with them and wants to purchase now i don't see anything wrong with me letting my mum buy them first since money is money when it comes to business but after my mum bought them i forgot to cancel the invoice that i had sent and my friend uh sent my friend the next day she tries to go pay for them and of course comes up with an error message she sends me a text asking something's wrong on my end and i explained to her about how my mom came to town she wants to try the size 10 she hadn't texted me since am i the asshole no but i feel like it's bad business practice i don't know yeah. if you've already invoiced someone and you're saying like you have the shoes as long as you pay for them like you've already sent the invoice Hmm. You should be keeping those shoes aside. Uh, yeah, it's not, you know, now so it's just like bad practice. Yeah. Like, especially if, you know, she had to like wait for her next paycheck or something. Like, if, um, like you won't do that to a normal customer. Like, once the invoice is yeah, kind of like if sent. You did, you did, like, if you did, that customer would be rightfully annoyed. Yeah. You said they could have the shoes. You send the invoice. Everything is said, and then you give it to someone else. Yeah, like you promised the shoes to her by like sending her the invoice, saying like, "Yeah, this is what I want to do." Like, she wanted the shoes, and then you gave them to someone else. That's just, yeah, that's pretty shitty. Yeah, shitty behavior. How's your uh, vapor vaporwave butcher going? Oh. I was about to say vaporwave boyfriend, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know. You might have a vaporwave boyfriend. <laughs> I do not know. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> what even would have it? They'd be super into like Macintosh and. Yeah, kind of like. A soft boy, I guess, but like the colors changed, I guess, to like the pinky, bluey, blue colors. Paperwave clothing, let's see. Mm. I feel like it would be kind of techy. Yeah. It both seems to be more about pastel colors than clothes style to me. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> hey, Renan. Yeah, I don't think it's really a style that you can wear, but like, I guess if you were into it, like, I can kind of see how you would make it into uh, aesthetic style. Damn, I so wish we got horror movie poster butcher. I know. Cool. It was so close. I thought it was going to be on the uh, poster. 
Pink shoulders were popular in the late 80s. True. True. And the model be buzzing? Thank you. Dragon Skull made it for me. That's great. I can like move around and stuff. Mm. <laughs> I still don't know how to like... How do I scroll? How, how was I meant to like, scroll down again? I don't remember. He did an awesome job. Yeah, yeah, honestly. And he made it so quickly, too. I love it. It's so cool. Is it a V-Roid? V-Roid, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to um, update all the textures, but I have to find time to do that. Instead of having lunch, has half a bag of chips. <laughs> half a bag of chips. <coughs> Are you good? Yep. Am I the asshole for wanting my boyfriend to take me on a nice date? I know this sounds stupid and immature, but I'd really like to hear different opinions. So my boyfriend, 20 male, hasn't taken me out for like half a year. But I'm asking it on am I the asshole because he's saving money now and doesn't have much. Oh. And somehow he always has money to repair his car. Also, what's bothering me is that I'm leaving the city for one year in less than a month and I'm always thinking like there is so little time for us to spend together. Why repairing the car, it can't, uh, why repairing the car, it can wait. Um, I really want to go out on a date like all couples do. You know, the fancy ones, not a luxury restaurant, of course, just maybe a coffee shop. I'm tired of walking in parks, eating sandwiches on a bench. I said to him... Um, and he said, what's stopping us to do it? We can do it anytime. He never did it in six months. It's giving if I wanted to, I would have. I mean, I think. I don't, I don't think she's wrong. For yeah. Car repairs can't wait. Public transit is always an option. She is the hospital. But like, is he doing like repair? Okay, this is what I want to know. Is he repairing the car or doing modifications to the car? Yeah, is it is it like a like one of those personal project cars? Yeah. Because like, honestly, like where I live, I'm surrounded by a bunch of people that do that. Um, they honestly, at this point, many of them just basically build new cars because mm. they use them for like a lot of different kinds of racing and stuff. Mm mm mm. But, like, they still have good relationships with, like, their wives and stuff. Like, yeah. And I've, I've babysat for multiple of them many times. Definitely more times than, you know, once every six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it depends. Like, I mean, it's, I mean, she's not asking to, like, to go for a lot. Like, to go to a coffee shop, I guess. And I guess... Yeah, we need to have more info. Is like the car. Is the car needed for like transport or is it just is like it the only car they have? I don't know. If it's the only car they have, then I, then I, I get that. Yeah, and you obviously need to do the car like first. But also, like, she can also take them both on dates because it doesn't seem like she does mm. that either. Yeah, I was actually like, like um, if she wants to take them on a date, she can also be the one that takes him on a date and pay for mm -mm. stuff because mm. it doesn't seem like that's what she does yeah only like i mean to a coffee shop like coffee yeah, shop's like, not that fancy <laughs> like you can get coffee for like you know 
Yeah. Four bucks each. For, yeah, for like four dollars. Yeah. yeah, I'm just in a nice cafe. Like, maybe it's a more thing about like her wanting him to make more yeah. of an effort. But then she should also be putting in as much effort as she wants. Yeah, yeah. Her definition of it. She did say they they were what she, what she was talking about. She was saying how things like kind of expensive for them. Um. Really want to go on a date like all couples do. You know the fancy one, not a luxury restaurant, of course. Just maybe a copy shop. Uh, or where they are. And they said that they're tired. Of, she's tired of walking in parks and eating sandwiches on a bench. I mean, there's other free things to do on dates mm. than just going to a park. Hmm. I said that to him and he said, what's stopping us to do it? We can do it any time. And never did it in the six months. Kind of sounds like he's like, yeah, we can go and just like. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, just say. Yeah. But then I feel like that's also like. You would want your partner to be putting an effort into it having a nice date with you yeah. not just you planning it yeah like <laughs> i'm about to out ben here like i mean <laughs> this, is, this is more of like a lack I, of communication thing was it? yeah yeah because um uh, maybe a big yeah because with, with ben like we'd been going to like the same like kind of restaurants like all the time like not not like cheap but kind of and i was like hey it'd be nice maybe if like once a year you could organize maybe like somewhere different maybe like a like a really like a nicer place i guess like i'm always the one like taking us to like uh i guess different places that aren't the same like asian place down the road <laughs> and i was like i it, it's not really the idea of like going to i guess it doesn't have to be a fancy restaurant but it's the idea of them putting in like if no, like, yeah, effort and kind of just like wanting to take you out somewhere nice, and like yeah. being like, hey, I don't know, maybe that's just me being an absolute prick, but I think it's nice to know that your partner like wants to take you to nice places and like treat you well, I guess. <laughs> well, obviously not all the time, like once a year type thing, but like I guess in my situation, it was always me saying like, hey, can we go out? Like I was like I always initiated it. But I also would have, like, I like when that's also reciprocated. To go to, like, somewhere, like, nice, like a nice date. Like, I can't always be the one, like, organizing the beach on the pic, like, the picnic on the beach, is what I mean. <laughs> and, like, the romantic dates. Like, I want, I want my partner to also take me on, like, romantic fun dates, too. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That are, like, self-motivated wanting to do those. Yeah, I'm yeah, just... yeah. Can we do this because I'm asking? <laughs> Mm -mm. Yeah, it's, it's different like if you ask. I feel like if you ask, then you're still like initiating it. But if it's just your partner being like, surprise, we're going to go on like a cute hike together, you know. Mm. Then doesn't want to go to the fancy restaurant because he's going to have a panic attack with a range of cutlery. <laughs> it's fun to plan out something a little bigger or different. It's something to look forward to. Then again, some guy is kind of an apartment with an inflatable bed and a TV. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's just nice that to like, obviously, if you're both in a relationship to do like, you know, cute surprise dates. Like it, if you're doing the same thing every week, kind of just gets boring and just feels like you're there because it's just part of routine. But if you're going on like a cute date, like, you know, like, yeah, a picnic on a beach or something, it's, Feels like, I guess, more effort. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. He seems to like going out and chilling in a park with her, and sometimes planning is less romantic. Like doing something fancy because you see how they're doing it. Doesn't say romance to me, it's just doing it because everyone else is. Mm, that, that's true as well. Like, it depends on the person. Like, I, I like really fancy places. I like not fancy you know. restaurants where the bill's gonna be like $200, but. Um, I guess like a nice Italian place. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sometimes just like going out to places that are like 
But that, that's just me. I'm a I'm a stuck up princess, basically. <laughs> but I like I like things just like you know yeah like cute dates. But going again like going to the same like kind of cheaper like places all the time. I was like this is kind of getting boring. <laughs> Like, pretty boring. Like, I want to do, yeah, something. Because, like, no, 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 the thing was, like, uh, with these, like, friends and stuff, like, they were going to, like, really fancy places, and I'm like, I want to go to fancy places, too! You know I like fancy places! <laughs> and then, yeah, then we started going out to, like, some different places, so it's nice. But, like, I also, like, uh, previous relationship before that, um, we couldn't even like go out on dates because the financial situation. Um, so we didn't like do anything. It, it was literally just like walking in the park every time, and it was like, well, it's getting kind of boring. But obviously, financial situation kind of can't. Which is fair enough, but nobody like. I guess you don't want to be going to Mac Macca's <laughs> every time on a date. I don't know, just, just communicate with each other. I think maybe she needed to say to the boyfriend, like, I want you to initiate going to somewhere. Instead yeah. of me having to initiate it all the time. I'll take care right now. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, yeah, maybe if she just said, like, yeah, I want you to initiate it. Like, surprise me type thing. Maybe that would have made a difference. I always try to make dates involve something something one or both of us is into and then dinner after before otherwise we're doing what we normally do just somewhere else yeah exactly like it's nice to just do like special things create special moments no also both just need to communicate better yeah yeah Hey tips! Welcome! Welcome in! Am I the also for admitting I regret having children? <gasps> oh like no but yeah. like don't tell your kids that yeah my wife and i are both 42 and in marriage counseling after our marriage basically went to shit after having kids six and four year old us uh, so three kids a six-year-old and four-year-old twins mm. uh, a lot of issues and disagreements have come up in our marriage that have driven us apart and i and i have been working through my resentment that going back for one more baby resulted in twins, including one which we are pretty sure has ADHD and ODD and is a nightmare child. Not something you would want to call your kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Our counselor asked me if I would have children if I, have to, if I had to do it all over again, and I said, honestly, no, which is fair. I, I mean, I reckon it's fair. Oh, thank you, Tex. like, you have the kids now. There's only so many things you can do. Mm. Uh, I love my kids and would take a bullet for them. But if I had the chance to go back to 24 when I finished grad school and could do my life over again, I young. wouldn't choose fatherhood. Yeah, I wouldn't choose fatherhood. It is not the fulfilling experience mm. everyone claims. And while I love my children, the sacrifices are not worth it to me. I had a much happier life before having children and have gone from someone who loved life to someone who just makes it through the day. Working a job he hates to provide for the wife and kids while silently wishing this wasn't my life. My wife is furious and taking it to the taking it the wrong way. Even told my six year old, Daddy, you don't, no, don't tell, tell your kids that. that. Daddy wishes you were never born. What? He didn't say that. This this dude did not say that. He's literally at saying all. like, yeah, he still loves his kids. He just probably wasn't the right choice you don't what? say that bro you don't tell your kid that even if that's it were true you don't trauma. tell your kid that that's gonna even give if trauma. it were 
like even if that's what the dad said mm. verbatim, you don't tell your kid that. Yeah. Oh shit. Like you should you should be like protecting them and obviously not telling them that shit. Oh, Jesus. Yes, I wish I never had kids, but I do love them. Would never hurt them or want to upset them. And I didn't say it to in front of my kids and I mm -hmm. never ever will. Yeah. I said it in marriage counseling. What should be a safe space mm -hmm. to talk about feelings? It has become a huge fight. Our marriage is not going to be safe now. And I know she will try and use this against me in divorce court to try and get soul custody and take everything and lie to the kids who I do love and still want to be a dad to them. She is incapable of understanding that you can love your kids, but also feel that parenthood was, wasn't the best choice yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really an asshole for saying it, though. No, absolutely not. Wife's 100% an asshole. Definitely. Absolute bitch. Holy shit. Like, yeah, um... Yeah, the two of Bill saying there's always been a stigma about saying you regret having kids. It's not uh, wrong to feel that way as long as it doesn't affect how you treat the kids, right? That being said, you don't tell the kids. Exactly, you don't tell them that you wish they were never born. And uh, they're not. He didn't directly say that they. He wished that. The, he never like, did it around. Yeah, never he, born. Yeah. He's, from what it sounds like, he's always, you know, treated them with love and everything. Yeah. Just wishes. He just he, thinks you know, that if he could if have them again. If he yeah. could go back. If he could go back, he mm -hmm. wouldn't. He wouldn't choose his path. Actually, he doesn't even like. He doesn't even really say he wishes he. Yeah, he just said if wasn't he wasn't yeah. father. He just says if he could go back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, there's an edit. Okay, this blew the fuck up, and there is no way I can reply to everyone's questions. But to address a couple, I have three kids, not four. One child is six, two or four. English is not my first language, and I forgot the comma. And even so, that sentence would have been much clearer in my native language. When I say I resent having twins, I am not saying it's my wife's fault, but three children is more than we budgeted bargained for, and I need to pick up a lot of overtime that I would not have had to pick up if we just had two kids. And that is what I resent, that and the child with ADHD, ODD. Ooh. My life is basically work and dealing with my kids, and do you know what ODD is? This child always refuses to do what is asked, gets angry and throws a tantrum when asked to do something he doesn't want to do, hits and kicks others deliberately annoys and hurts others is extremely spiteful screams and kicks me constantly always all day every day it's exhausting and it is hell yeah i wouldn't have him again most people wouldn't if they had to raise him just because i wouldn't do this ever again doesn't mean i'm going i'm not committed to being a good dad and being present in their lives i just would not do it over again if i could redo my at my adult life mm. My first kid was not born at 24. Oh, right. He's just talking about like that point as well. Uh, I, okay. I, I thought I understood that part, but I just said that because if I could do my whole post university life differently, I would change some other things to mainly career. And to be honest, after all this, I regret marrying my wife, which is why I said, uh, which is why I said it that way. I'm guessing they met post university. Yeah, yeah. Seems like it. Regarding calling the ADHD ODD twin a nightmare, go Google what it means. It is very difficult to manage and he has been kicked out of three daycare places because oh, they could God. not handle him and my parents even refused to babysit him. We never get a break from home and no one can handle time. Mm, that sucks. That's just a really shitty situation. Hey Crumpet! How are you? Honestly, he probably should have stopped at one if you had difficulties with the first yeah i don't understand why people think having kids is going to solve your From relationship what it sounds like they had the second or planned to have the second kid to save their marriage yeah. and then <laughs> and then twins That's came funny. along and then he's like oh, doubly sure yeah no this, this sucks yeah i bet that odd kid should be introduced to weed true true I mean 3D, yeah, I'm in 3D. I'm in 3D. Um Yeah, I don't think he's an asshole. I think he's just someone who's really struggling obviously with being a parent. Um and having to navigate having a kid who's neurodivergent, which can be quite difficult. Very difficult. Uh -huh. but he's not saying that he doesn't love his kids. And wants to abandon them. 3D's nuts. <laughs> I really don't understand why people think having a kid is going to save their shitty relationship. If anything, it's going to make it worse. 
having a kid yeah a lot of people think it's gonna like strengthen your bond you like Ooh. your dying bond because now you have something that ties you together no, forever it's gonna split you apart even more people don't yeah, think how stressful okay. it is to like raise a child raise a whole ass child like, no they you do not think that you need to like look after them and make sure that you don't put your shitty like views on them and then oh my god 100% gonna make it worse every time yeah if you want a second kid get a puppy or some other pet with a short lifespan <laughs> like a snail it's not fair on the kid too yeah but like the the fact that the wife said oh your daddy doesn't love you and wishes you weren't here like that's yeah, fucked that, that should that's stay between tough. you two wow like, there's, there's a lot of shit, like, per postnatal depression? That's a that's a big thing that's not discussed oh, a lot. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's an awful. I've heard a few girls in high school say having a baby is going to fix all their problems. No, like it was actually going to fix their problem in high school. No, nah, no. Nah. How is that going to fix anything? Oh, am I the asshole for yelling at my husband over what he asked me to do? My husband has no family here besides his brother and he said we should move a thousand miles away to go to live with my cousin. My entire life is here. Uh, with his, his cousin, sorry. My entire life is here. My insurance only works for the state I'm in. My cars are here. My family's here. My pets are here. My only friends are here. Everything I have ever known is here. And he wants me to leave my entire world just behind when I have bad anxiety and depression. So I yelled at him, what am I supposed to do? Just leave everything for him? What about my son? He would grow up without grandparents and anything. I would have no one to help me with him. So am I the asshole for yelling at him that I don't want to lose everything? I want to update. He technically has more family here, like his uncle and cousins, but he has always been spending more time and caring for his brother. He should be making 3000 a month, but I never see more than 500 for it. Of it. And it's getting to me. Because he complains that I don't make enough money when he makes a lot and it just disappears. At least $700 a week and he's yelling at me that we can't save money or pay bills. I barely make enough of, for half of the bills and rent. I spend maybe $50 on gas a month. He also gives his car to his brother and I still have to help them fix, fix them. And to move a thousand miles, I would just have to give up at least one of my project cars to tow the other one. And I was just about to get another Jeep. Plus, I'd be leaving my friends and he probably would argue that the dog can be left behind. If that happens, I will leave until either he apologizes or changes his mind. Ooh. Sir. So she has family there. So he wants to move a thousand miles away to go live with his cousin. Like, I see it in both. Like, she obviously doesn't want to leave her family and have no family. But he also has no family where he is right now. Besides his brother. Besides his uncle and cousins, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later on, yeah. going to move to his brother. Hmm. Hmm. The husband, yeah. So the husband does have family where they are already. He just wants to move yeah. to where his cousin is. And uproot their whole life to go live with the cousin? Why does he want to live with the cousin? I feel like I need more context. And I don't think she knows why he wants to move. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Um, I only yelled after he kept pushing me. He has an uncle here, his brother, cousins, more family here than they... It isn't about family for him. For him, he has lived there before 
for me it's brand new and how am I supposed to handle that get a new job probably sell my project cars everything for me would end but for him everything would be perfect I don't know if I can do that my cars are my life too I work on them whenever I have free time I don't know Did she say she has a son? Yeah. Info. What's the story with you but being able to hold a job? I hope it's not because you keep saying you have anxiety and depression. If that's the case, then move since staying put hasn't helped. It's not due to my anxiety. I lost three jobs. I was for alcohol on a day off. Didn't read the handbook well enough to know no imp employee made drink on premises two was due to pregnancy three was due to a guest complaint karen and unfortunately she actually could get me fired even though i didn't do anything wrong because she wasn't the wife of a business partner i'm currently trying to get a new job as i don't have a high school diploma you both sound toxic it's sign they aren't meant to be together yeah Like, you have to make compromises in relationships. You can't just have it all your way. And it sounds like she kind of wants to have it, like, all her way. Yeah. I think they're all assholes. They all suck. They all suck. Yeah, I think I finished my drawing. E. <laughs> You'll suck ass. Also, if she's barely scraping by, why does she want to keep buying multiple cars? Yeah! Like, how does that work? I know, I know. That was similar to the guy who was like er, wanting to repair his car, but like we didn't know if that's repairs or like modifications. They can be flipped for money. I guess so. That zoom in on the arm looked a little sussy. The arm? Does the arm look like a penis? Ugh. Is this like you with your yogurt lid? I think so. Maybe. <laughs> but it doesn't seem like she is selling them. They're her project cards. Yeah, I think she said somewhere down here that she didn't want to sell. Do you want to zoom to weigh in? Do you want to what? It looked like a penis when it was zoomed in. Oh. Uh. Oh, the hanging arm. Oh, this one. Oh, it kind of does look like a penis. Reveal yourself. It looks like a penis a bit. Yeah, this one? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I see it now. I see it now. <laughs> How much is that peanut in the window? The one with the wiggly balls? How much is that penis in the window? How much is that big penis there? How much is the penis in the window? I don't remember the rest of the song. Oh. Do, do. 
<laughs> walking through the red light district be like? <laughs> oh my god. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nice car. 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 Nice car and balls. I want a chocolate eclair. No, 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 no. Profiteroles? Oh, profiteroles. Yes. That is fucking bang, bro. Yes. They're so good. I haven't made them in ages. Oh, they're so good. Where the fuck do you get profiteroles from? Kind of have to make it. Reminding me of the mannequin arm in the Little Nightmares 2 that absolutely just looks like a disembodied weenie. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. Know. yeah. I, I've watched so many playthroughs of Little Nightmares. It's such a good game. Like, I'd play it myself, but I don't think I have. I think I'd rage quit. You should. I'd rage quit, like, the platformy kind of stuff. It's fine. It's easy peasy. <laughs> I'll stick to my point and click. We're a quitter. I am. I don't like gaming. <laughs> I'm not a gamer girl. I'm not going to lie and say I'm a gamer girl when I'm not. I'm different. I'm not like the other girls. I'm worse. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> At least we haven't disagreed on any of these yet. Which a lot of people play the nightmares. Also, love seeing reactions to those games. Yeah, it was a really good game. A lot of lore, as well. Yeah. Oh, am I the arsehole for letting my dog pee in a neighbor's yard? I was walking my dog. She was on a six-foot leash as required by law. And as she was peeing in a yard along the road, a woman pulled in the driveway and yells at me for an arsehole for letting my dog pee in other people's yards. There was no fence or no dog signs. Also, my neighbor has a six-foot public easement in the front yard for utilities access. Yes. You are an asshole, <laughs> yeah. Nah, I, you, you are an asshole. Don't let your dog pee in like random people's yard. Like, yeah, don't let your dog pee in other people's property. That's that's so fucked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, okay, was this okay? But was the neighbor like? Because there's some areas where there's no footpath. It's just easement the whole way. So like, I kind of get if it was. But like, I would make you sure. Mean, like, the... Huh? You mean like out in like the front of people's houses? Yeah, yeah, so like, technically in people's properties, there's like a, like there's, your kind, there's an easement uh, where it becomes like council owned land and yours. Usually that's like where the footpath starts or the sidewalk. And then like from the sidewalk, there's like a little nature strip area where like, they can, like dogs can like pee and stuff. But there's some places that don't have like that footpath sidewalk, so it's just like completely grass the whole way there. So like I get that if they were like maybe on the very edge, but if they're in like the middle of the yard, like no. Yeah, if I I thought they were meaning like the dog was just like running up over to the neighbor's like backyard or something, and then. Yeah, I'm assuming there. this is the front yard. But also, just because I have a fence and no dogs allowed, shouldn't really just, like let them pee in their front yard. Yeah. I think it depends on like where the easement is that starts the council land. The I'll have to chase my neighbor's dog out the with the hose <laughs> every time I catch it. Oh my god. With the hose. Nice. Oh yeah, it kind of does look like a penis, eh? I thought you were already figured that out. 
Hmm? So you had already been, uh, acknowledged. <laughs> yes, it kind of looked like a penis. I just want to acknowledge it again. I mean, it would be an issue if they were taking a crap and not cleaning up. Pissing isn't a big unless it's a problem and killing the plants or something. But I guess like it can leave like little like brown patches maybe. It was bright circles of yellow grass, yeah. Okay, this one is, am I the arsehole for wanting my friend to share their screen name? Title and situation is a little confusing, I'll do my best to explain because of the nature of the issue, blah blah blah. Uh, so I've been involved in an NSFW community for context subject matter isn't relevant but embarrassing enough to want to keep separate accounts. For a long time and in that time I've cultivated what I believe to be a few very close friends in the community. This post is about one person specifically we'll call W. W joined the community a little while after I did and we quickly became friends. We shared a lot of things in common and fairly similar personalities. In the time we spent together, I've grown extremely close to them and generally consider them to be my close friends and believe they feel the same. Now onto the matter. I was recently talking to them about mutual S uh, safer work hobby that I enjoy doing and I have recently taken an interest in. After some discussion about it, they agreed to join me and some friends in trying out the hobby. However, as we talked about ways to communicate with my friends and I said W said that they wouldn't, they would use an alternate account connected to the NSFW username because at first glance it doesn't connect to anything weird unless you go digging for it. The problem is that the friends I invited to join are connected to my safer work account. So I will be clearly, so I will clearly be using my usual username. I have no problem with them finding out this username at some point as I consider them one of my closest friends and I trust them. My problem is that I bought this up and they still insist on using their NSFW user. As I type this out, I sound how ridiculous it sounds, but am I the asshole for being slightly upset and feeling like they don't trust me the way I trust them? I know they have been every right to protect their privacy in, in any way they want, but it makes me feel like they might not be as close to me as I am to them. I'm not confronted about. I've not confronted them about anything. This is just my inner mind being conflicted and wondering if strangers on Reddit think I'm overreacting. Am I the asshole? So, the friend, so W, said that they want to use an alternate account connected to their new, to their not safe for work username. Because at first glance it doesn't connect to anything weird, unless you're digging for it. So basically W just doesn't want to use the username that they use for the NSFW account. Yep, and the uh, friend doesn't care. I think they're the asshole. Because... This, uh, the OP is introducing them to, like, a whole bunch of new people. And they... W probably doesn't want the new people finding out about everything. Yeah, I think they're the asshole. They're obviously not comfortable with random people knowing that. No matter how, like close you are together yeah everyone has the that you know like that right to privacy yeah so also, like if it doesn't bother you mm. like if you don't care the only reason is you're using the same user is because you don't care but you are in like but you know someone that does care mm. then what's so wrong about using it yeah seems like they're overreacting 100 percent 100 percent overreaction oh there's an am i the asshole filtered Uh, 
and I think I'm done finally. Holy shit, that took so long to actually get something on the page. Hell yeah. Oh, oh, okay, this is a good one. This is actually a really good one. Um, am I the asshole for breaking a patient's confidentiality to tell my friend that her boyfriend is HIV positive? Am I the asshole for breaking a patient's confidentiality? Tell my boyfriend. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been eating me up on the inside for the past week, so I'm going to lay it all out here. One of my closest friends, Amanda, started dating a guy, Matt, about two months ago. I'd met him twice before, and he seemed pretty seedy to me, but she was happy overall, so I was happy for them. I work at our local hospital. I don't delve too much about my role, but I'm involved in providing medical care. Um, but I do not have access to patient records, and I'm permitted to look... Uh, but I do have access to patient records and permitted to look through under certain circumstances with ethics approved. I came across Matt's charts over a week ago. I was not snooping. I was explicitly gathering patient information for approved tasks and he was one of the patients in the pile of charts. It's not too much of a coincidence. I was going through 500 patient records and this is the only nearby hospital. I discovered Matt was HIV positive from his chart. I was under sh unsure whether Amanda was aware. I wrestled with this in many different uh, directions should I mind my own business and not violate confidentiality and risk her contracting the disease should I approach him first even though it's not my place and we've only met twice should I go straight to her to confirm that she knows ultimately I felt an obligation to her as my friend and her well-being so I told her knowing her I felt like she was felt like she was unaware since she generally extremely risk averse and something seemed off about this guy so I felt like approaching him might not accomplish anything she was so shocked to find out about his HIV status and broke up with him Amanda was thankful to me but evidently she let him know how she found out and I was let go from my position two days ago I understood the risk I was taking and I was hoping it was a calculated risk but now I'm wondering if her overstep by breaking confidentiality am I the asshole Hmm. Uh, this I understand is... where she's coming from. It's unprofessional of her to do. Yeah. But like I know why she did it. Yeah. It's unprofessional, but it was also to protect her friend from contracting HIV, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Like that that's a big thing because like so you life, have like once you you're stuck with it. Life and yeah. Like, life sucks. Yeah. Good friend, bad worker. Legally yeah. and socially no. Is HIV is a little dangerous lifelong thing to live with. I'd probably do the same thing to be honest. Yeah, I think I would do the same thing. I I yeah. I would I would also, you know, do what the uh, what OP did. Mm like fully preparing to you know be fired mm. it's like you, yeah. i knew that a friend one of my friends was going out with someone that was hiv positive and i had a strong enough feeling that they had not been told mm. i would I'd tell them i tell them yeah because i wouldn't want my friend to have to live a life dealing with hiv because yeah, yeah. hiv really sucks yeah would have reached out to him not to her because then you're discussing with a patient and not someone else i don't know because she was mentioning how he seemed kind of seedy and yeah he would have made it to evade or like get away with it or something yeah and probably not tell her i think it's a very situational thing but most people apparently the, the conclusion was that the final verdict is asshole. 41% said asshole. 37% not the asshole. Uh, e has everyone. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. E yeah. yeah, yeah, everyone sucks here is 18%. Info is 1%. I don't know. I don't think she's an asshole. Like. I don't think she's as an asshole. As a friend. Either. Like, just. Yeah. You could also talk to someone above you to raise concern since you know the person. Hmm. If he was actively having physical relations with her, 
and not let her know I think that's illegal here. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't live with myself if I let my friend catch a lifelong disease if I could prevent it, even if it wasn't professional to do so. It would have been horrible for them to contract but because it because of because of them there. So there is that. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like imagine if, yeah, like the friend did contract it and you're sitting there like, yeah, shit, I knew I could have prevented this. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're just going to sit there and you're like, oh, I, I knew this yeah. would happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. If someone above them were to contact him and ask if he saw the partner and he couldn't, didn't he could have been reported by the hospital? True. Hmm. Oh shit. <laughs> I almost ripped my iPad out. The charger. The assumption is that it happened in the US, it may not have. That's true. It could happen somewhere else where that lore isn't, yeah. Did you say that you finished yours, finally? Yep. Hell yeah. You wanna send out your so I can share with the stream? Or you could just like not show anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I can just say I finished it. Like, yeah, it's done. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> it's done. Done. It's done. It's done. Me, you're done. <laughs> I totally didn't just sit here this whole time and not do anything. It's done. Yeah, I wasn't just sitting here scrolling through my the house. Oh, <laughs> it's done. It's done. <sighs> I'm gonna need a nap. I think my fatigue is. Food. Because I woke up late and get anything to eat. Yeah, I need to have something more reliable than half a packet of chips and I had toast with peanut butter on it this morning. That's all I've eaten. <laughs> I feel like shit. <laughs> well, I feel like shit. Also, I have Disney Plus now so I can watch Charlie do one stitch. No. But Ben literally bought it to watch Lilo and Stitch. I was like, I want to watch Lilo and Stitch now. <laughs> I want to get in bed and watch Lilo and Stitch. There's this um original series on it called uh, Only Murders in the Building. It's actually pretty good. I've been watching oh? it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a bit of a satirical take on like murder mysteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what's his name? Fucking Steve Martin. Mm -hmm. The... The guy with like the super white hair, he was in like yours, mine, and oh, he's Pink Panther. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. he's he's in it, and uh, Selena Gomez. Mm -hmm. What did I save it under? There, oh, shit, man, holy shit. Bruh, what the fuck? Oh, that's so good. Wait, tell stream. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> yes. Holy fuck. It's gotta be big canvas. Fucking good, what the fuck? Bruh, what is this, man? Holy shit. Look how fucking sick this is. Bruh! Bruh! The fucking, like, the blood spot and everything! Bruh! That's so fucking awesome! Holy shit! Holy shit! 
Look at my dick. I drew a dick. So fucking sick, oh my god. The whole concept, I love it. How cracked super is it art? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Very, look, in comparison, like, it's so fucking awesome. So fucking awesome. We just different. We just different. <laughs> I love it, bro. I like this too. Like the uh, fucking you draw profiles like way too well, man. I too don't well. think so. I struggle with profiles. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's because I just like drew a whole bunch of profiles like over and over again. But I, I for some reason I struggle. Like I always make the nose too big in comparison to like the rest of the chin area. Um, but I think I figured it out. Where it's some it looks okay. I don't know, profiles kind of suck. Don't even try to get me to draw like the three quarter profile. I don't even know how. It. That's the only one that I can do. I just draw front on inside. <laughs> Anything that's dynamic, I'm like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Fuck it, bruv. Fuck it. Fuck it. Okay, I'm gonna go find someone to raid. I'm gonna raid Zero because Zero is on the moment. Yeah, he's playing on Phasma with Cap and Mecha. Oh no! Yes. Yeah. They're doing some spooky spooks too. This was pretty fun, yeah. But we definitely gotta we definitely gotta do the nice guys next time. Yeah. Uh, what do, what do we want to have raid message to be? What's your raid? Uh, I drew a penis raid. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good one. Oh, who used the Wait, AP card? The, no, use the derp. Yeah, the AP derp card. The meth AP. Oh, the meth AP. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Oh, there's plenty of time. Fuck. There we go. I <laughs> love how you don't know what it is until I say it's meth AP. Yeah. I obviously didn't want to call it meth AP. <laughs> it's like, it's like, AP tired. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is AP tired? Oh, meth AP. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I was like, that's probably going to get me in trouble. That's why I'm going to call it AP tired. Kind of does look like if AP did a whole bunch of meth. You could have, you could have called it methy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, methy. Well, I hate but love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, we're leaving now. Um, ha have fun. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Behave. Bye. Um, bye. Bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>